Welcome to an intro to factoring. Now let's get started. So here, before we get into what factoring is as a process, we first need to define what a factor itself is. So from arithmetic, you've probably been doing this since elementary school. Maybe you didn't have the right vocabulary for it or the specific vocab that we're going to use here. But a factor is simply a number that divides into another number without leaving a remainder. So what does this look like? Well, we say two is a factor of eight, because if we divide eight by two, we get four evenly, and there's nothing left over. There's not a remainder of one or two or something else. So there's no remainder left over. That means that two is a factor of eight. Similarly, we can also say that two is a factor of 12, because if we try to divide 12 by two, it goes in evenly and it gives us six as the answer. Again, no remainder. By contrast, two is not a factor of seven, because if we try to divide seven by two, we get a quotient of three. That means two goes into seven evenly three times, but then two times three is six. We're left with a remainder of one. Now, what happens if we flip the paradigm? So if we multiply five and seven, we get 35. That process going in that direction is called multiplication. So if we're given five and we're given seven and we multiply these two things together, we result in 35. That process is called multiplication. Now, if we change the direction in which we move, if we change it to 35 and we say, okay, what two numbers would have multiplied to give us the 35 as the answer? That process is called factorization. That's basically what we're doing for the rest of the semester, for the most part, at least. Now we can say that 35 is a multiple of five because I can multiply five by something else and get 35. But the flip side of that would be to say that five is a factor of 35. And using the definition we just got in the previous slide, if we divide 35 by five evenly, we get seven and there's no remainder left over. Similarly, we can talk about the number seven and how 35 is a multiple of seven, because I can multiply seven by something, five in particular, and get 35 as the answer. On the flip side of the same coin, if we divide 35 by seven, we get five exactly, so seven goes into 35 evenly five times, and there's no remainder left over, which is why we can say that seven is a factor of 35. Now we can use the same idea, but instead of using five and seven, what if we replace the five with x plus one and we replace the seven with x plus two? In one of the previous sections, we've talked about multiplication of polynomials. So we should be able to multiply these things out. I encourage you to pause the video and actually do that and see if you do indeed get x squared plus three x plus two. Not that you've had a chance to do that, the process of going from the left side to the right side is called multiplication, just like in the previous slide. But instead of doing it with numbers, now we're doing it with algebraic structures or binomials or polynomials in particular. So we say the right-hand side, which is kind of like our 35, is a multiple of x plus one and x plus two, because I can multiply x plus one by something to get this expression, x squared plus three x plus two. I can also multiply x plus two by something to get x squared plus three x plus two. Now, if I wanted to reverse the direction, start with this side and say, what would I have multiplied to give me x squared plus three x plus two? Well, the answer would be x plus one times x plus two. I would have multiplied these two things to create this thing on the right-hand side. So we say that x plus one and x plus two are factors of this expression, x squared plus three x plus two. So for the majority of the time that we actually have left in this course, we're going to be solving problems where at some point of time or another, we're going to have to factor expressions. The chapter that we're about to head into, you'll learn about how to factor various types of those expressions. One of the things that we've already done is, you know, we multiplied two things, or we squared actually, uh, some expression, and we got 25x squared plus 20xy plus 4y squared. 
So we did this with the formula section, with the special product formulas. The questions that you're going to get in this section are, well, what was the original question? Or what would we have multiplied in order to get 25x squared plus 20xy plus 4y squared? Hopefully you remember that it would have actually been 5x plus 2y, the quantity squared. This would have come from the square of some formula. More on this in the coming weeks.